you on soon. I'm giving y'all a good warning so um, y'all will know we're doing live stream. We'll do a live stream once a week on Patreon, man. I'm um, coming up soon though. I ain't just gonna. I'm gonna give y'all guys time to get to the Patreon. Salute the um. We going members only in a minute. Salute the um. Salute to Eric S. Op Nation Hall of Famer. Salute to Barry B. Op Nation Hall of Famer, man. We're beginning the news at 10 tonight with a breaking news update. An argument between co-workers left a man dead in Raleigh. Thanks for being with us. I'm Shay Arthur. WREG's Alan Self is live tonight after speaking to witnesses about what happened. Alan, what did you learn? Shay, that man died here at the hospital this afternoon. I spoke with Donald Paris, the owner of a detail shop where they both worked. He told me he thought the victim was going to survive. I made sure it was okay. The guy went up and the ambulance came. That's when I gave up because I made sure the guy had some water and he was still talking to me and everything. Donald Paris said the man who was shot off stage roll told him he felt pain. Paris thought that was good news at the time. Because he got shot in the back. So, when, so for him to feel pain lets me know that some type of nerves are still in, you know, intact. So I think it was a good thing feeling that pain. I would have been more concerned. He just sitting there, didn't feel anything. Parrish details the interaction he had with the victim after the shooting. He revealed the shooting was between two members of his team who argued over a food stamp card. <laughs> this is the owner of the detail shop. Get it is a shooting. You'll never believe what the shooting's over. We can't make this stuff up. Feel anything. Parrish details the interaction he had with the victim after the shooting. He revealed the shooting was between two members of his team who argued over a food stamp card. The shooting occurred inside this bay, where Paris said the two detail workers were fixing this woman's car. This car was in the in the bay when whatever happened over there, the dude ran in the bay where the truck was. Uh, he just called us and told us after we dropped the truck off that... Um, Something was going on up here that it was tied up with police. Paris says the arrest was made by an undercover Memphis police officer. He says the police are often here getting their cars fixed or washed. And it just so happened to be an officer here when the shooting took place. I thank God for the, the lady officer was here. She was undercover. When we heard those shots, I came first time I was looking and she came from nowhere. They identified herself. She used a customer's, I think it was a U or U Haul truck. Hold on. Where did, where did he say what it was over? That was good news at the time. Because he got shot in that back. So, when, so for him to feel pain, lets me know that some type of nerves are still in, you know, intact. So I think it was a good thing feeling that pain. I would have been more concerned if he just sitting there, didn't feel anything. Parrish details the interaction he had with the victim after the shooting. He revealed the shooting was between two members of his team who argued over a food stamp card. The shooting... <sighs> And a car detail, please. They arguing over a food stamp card. Now one is dead and one is going to prison. Well, Two he'll probably get it. It's one day. One day he'll go to prison because in Memphis yeah. he'll get out tomorrow and his court date will be in fucking. And if they're years. both working, what the fuck are they doing getting food stamps? Well, I mean, you can get food stamps and, and work in in and 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 you know, food stamp fraud and also there's a certain level of money you gotta make. Like you can work thirty two hours and still get food stamps. They probably get paid can't cash. Work 40. They probably get paid cash working in the car wash too. Yeah, exactly. And and you yeah, exactly. So working there's scam in the system and like everybody double dipping. Yeah, everybody does that shit though. Yeah, that's, but that's that's, that's the, the least that's the, the system least isn't story, designed though, to support that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's the least. Yeah. That's the least. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this story is more sad, hilarious, or pathetic. I don't know. Arguing over a food stamp card at work. Both of them at work, man. We need more jobs. Remember poverty? Poverty is what causes these black men to kill each other. It's poverty. If we could get them more jobs and free housing, man, nothing would ever happen, man. Like white people, like all white people got, man, because all white people is rich, man. We got to, we got to, um, you know, we got to bridge the gap, man. No, didn't feel anything. Paris details the interaction he had with the victim after the shooting. He revealed the shooting was between two members of his team who argued over a food stamp card. The shooting occurred inside this bay 
where Paris said the two detail workers were fixing this woman's car. This car was in the in the bay when whatever happened over there, the dude ran in the bay where the truck was. Uh, he just called us and told us after we dropped the truck off that um, something was going on up here, that it was tied up with police. Paris says the arrest was made by an undercover Memphis police officer. He says the police are often here getting their cars fixed or washed, and it just so happened to be an officer here when the shooting took place. I thank God for the, the lady officer was here. She was undercover. When we heard those shots, I came the first time I was looking, and she came from nowhere. They identified herself. She used her customers. I think it was a U-Haul truck, even before the police got here, just to stage him out of the area. She took him. And that's bold, and that she needs to be rewarded for that. That's, that's, some, that's work that she, that's unheard of. After the shooting, the shop, as well as the gas station and neighboring businesses remained open. But T. Jones, who lives nearby, says she's had enough of the violence. That's why I'm trying to move out the area because my cousin and dads have been back. White people, man. She coming to a neighborhood near you, man. Get your, um, get your casseroles and your goddamn potato salad with, um, raisins in it and be prepared because you know how white people they greet you and shit when you yeah. move to white neighborhoods um the wife brings over a goddamn casserole and shit to welcome you to the neighborhood and shit and if you ever need anything sweetie don't hesitate to ask i know you, you you're joking like crazy but I, that still happens in my town when i bought oh, this I know house it does. No, okay. he's not joking. He's joking, but he's serious. At the yeah. White people are nice. White yeah, people are nice, very nice, man. Very nice. They're nice, man. They're neighborly. Now, not nice. all of them. Some of them are pieces of shit, but the the collective of them is nice. Yeah, some of them ain't shit. Some of them park on the fucking sidewalk. Some of them put their trash out on the wrong day. Some of them fucking don't know how to fucking keep their house up. But it'll be two murders in the city the whole year. And those will both be some guy killed his wife or some wife killed their husband. Or a tweaker. Yeah. Or, or, some, man, guy. or some man passing through. <laughs> or some man passing through. Or some man that just, you know, stopped on the exit to get some gas and Happen to be in their town and shit for, for five minutes and kill somebody. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, you know, convenience store next to the expressway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coming to a neighborhood near you, white people. Ben, but T. Jones, who lives nearby, says she's had enough of the violence. That's why I'm trying to move out the area because my cousin died to gun violence. He got shot 13 times. So I'm trying to get out of Memphis completely because it's always something every day. One person was detained following the shooting. It is unclear if they are facing charges. Live at the medical district, Alan Self, WRH. The gun violence is making black flight. I know I live in a glass house, right? I burn. What a shit home Memphis is. This is inexcusable. We can't get have our, our children getting gunned down uh, for any reason.